This is a sap-sucking sea slug called Placida dendritica. Sap-sucking, or saclagloss sea slugs, are a group of marine gastropods that have lost their shells. They are found in the rocky intertidal throughout the world, but are especially prevalent in the temperate waters of the northern hemisphere. They live and feed on siphonaceous green macroalgae. On the Pacific coast, they feed primarily on three types of these seaweeds, Codium sacheliae, Bryopsis, and Codium fragile. Although the species can eat all three of these seaweed varieties, each individual is highly oligophagous. Studies have shown that they would quite literally rather starve to death than change their food sources. They eat by puncturing the cell wall of the algae with their specialized mouth part called a radula. Radulas are found exclusively in mollusks and are like conveyor belts full of teeth. Sacroglossin radula are distinct from other mollusks by the presence of a single row of teeth which are adapted for their sectorial feeding habits. They can slurp the entire chytosolic contents of the algae they feed upon with this specialized tooth. Everything is digested except mysteriously the chloroplasts stay intact. The slug engulfs the cell and it is phagocytized in the animal's tissue in an act called kleptoplasty. Chloroplasts are found within the animal in beautiful green dichonomous designs throughout its body. They are found highly concentrated in its serrata, which are the frilly bits on its back. These are connected to its digestive tract and are also used in gas exchange and as protection as the animal can autonomize the serrata if attacked. Chloroplasts are the cells where photosynthesis occurs and are only found in autotrophs. The sacroglossin slugs are thought to use these stolen chloroplasts to produce metabolites like sugars and fatty acids through photosynthesis. Although there are animals that form symbiotic relationships with photosynthetic autotrophs that supply them with nutrients, no other animal is known to photosynthesize on its own like these slugs. It is not known how the animal is able to digest the algae without harming the chloroplasts, and the mechanisms and functions of kleptoplasty are still poorly understood. There are 284 species of sacroglossins, and each has the capacity of retaining chloroplasts for different amounts of time, some for as little as a couple of hours and others for up to a year. Whether these chloroplasts stay photosynthetically active when inside the animal is highly debated. Here we can see photosynthesis happening inside the slug at 0, 3, 12, and 36 hours. The animal seems to be performing photosynthesis at all levels that light is available, and photosynthesis increases with longer light length times, but does not occur when placed in the dark. In starvation studies, more pronounced weight loss was seen in slugs kept in the dark compared to those with access to light that were able to photosynthesize. Species in the genus Placida have been shown to photosynthesize as well, but there is no clear evidence of this behavior taking place in P. dendritica. Alternatively, another study showed that slugs were able to survive starvation for months in the dark, just as well as they did under light. Clearly, more research needs to be done to fully understand kleptoplasty. Currently, it is being studied all around the world, which is exciting news for all the budding marine biologists out there. The story of symbiosis does not end here. If you look deep within the codium, you can see another microscopic world full of diatoms and a kaleidoscope of green jewels that harbor nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. And if you zoom out, you can see parasitic red algae growing on the codium as well. Interestingly, P. dendritica is most commonly found on codium harboring these red algae. I have a feeling if we continue to study these interactions, we will uncover even more symbiotic relationships in the future.